The connecting rod is a pin that connects the crankshaft to the blade shaft. Over time, the steel pin can wear down, along with the rollers that fit on each end. In rare cases, the pin can be sheared off. Replacing the connecting rod is a repair that you can do yourself, and I'm going to show you how. Hi, I'm Mark Socha. Do-it-yourself repairs like these are easier than you might think. From lawn machines to cordless grills, kitchen mixers, outdoor grills, our how-to videos walk you through each repair from start to finish. So doing it yourself means never having to do it alone. Let's get started. I'll begin by removing one half of the rear handle. Now I'll remove the shoe. Now I'll remove the rubber boot. Now I'll remove the four screws that secure the gearbox to the motor housing. With the screws removed, I can separate the gearbox and armature from the motor housing. Now I'll separate the armature from the gearbox. It's secured with a plate and two screws. Now I'll open the gearbox. On the back side of the gearbox, I'll remove the bearing cover. Next, I need to remove the screw that secures the crankshaft. If I try to rotate the screw, it'll just rotate the crankshaft as well. So I'll insert a screwdriver between the counterweight and the connecting rod, and then I can remove the screw. Now I'll go ahead and remove the guide from the housing. With the guide removed, now I can pull the entire linkage out of the housing. Next, I'll remove the gear. At this point, the hub will fall free from the bearing. Now I'll remove the guide, the rollers, and the pin. Now I can install the new connecting rod. I'll line the blade shaft with the arm on the crankshaft, and then insert the connecting rod through both pieces. And I'll reinstall the rollers. You'll notice one edge of the roller is tapered. The taper should be facing out. And I can reinstall the guide. I'll apply some new grease to the inside of the guide around the rollers. I'll separate the conical washer and the toothed washer from the gear. Now I can begin reinstalling the gear and the rest of the drivetrain. The splines on the washer need to engage with the cogs on the back of the crankshaft. I'll install the conical washer first. I want the taper of the washer to be pointing towards the back of the crankshaft. Then I'll install the washer, making sure it aligns with the crankshaft. I'll apply some grease to the back of the washer, and then install the gear. Now I need to carefully hold the assembly in position as I reinstall the housing to make sure that the washer doesn't fall away from the cogs on the crankshaft. I'll install the hub and the screw, but I won't tighten the screw completely at this point. I'll rotate the bushing around and push it up on the blade shaft until it aligns with the pivot pins. Now I can secure the guide. And now I can tighten up the screw. Again, I'll prevent the gear from rotating by placing a screwdriver between the counterweight and the rod. Now I'll reinstall the bearing cover. I'll apply some more of the grease to the gear. And now I'll reinstall the other half of the housing. And secure it with the screws. I start the screws with a screwdriver so I don't cross-thread them. Then I'll use my impact to finish up. 
Now I can reinstall the armature to the gearbox. Now I can slide the armature and gearbox assembly back into the motor housing. I'll need to separate the brushes as I do this. I'll use a pair of needle nose pliers to spread them open. Once it's in place, I'll secure it with the screws. I'll reinstall the boot and the shoe. And I'll finish up by reinstalling the housing. And now you can replace the connecting rod in your recip saw. Be sure to check back often for new videos and expert advice. If you found this video helpful, give us a thumbs up and leave a comment.